now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am The League Dad, and tonight I am joined by Kevin and Mitchell. Unfortunately, Alistair is doing the responsible thing. He has to work early tomorrow, and so he's getting a, a good night's rest uh, because we do record these a little bit late at night for us on the East Coast, which is me and Alistair. Uh, but yeah, we have Kevin and Mitchell, and we got three, so we're going to keep on moving and keep the show going. But how are you guys doing? There's a lot of action uh, this week, some weird stuff going on, as always, in the LCS, like things that you don't expect but uh how are you guys doing besides that like how was your weekend uh and you know besides the team liquid loss there kevin how was how'd you do this weekend? <laughs> i mean i'm kind of getting used to the team liquid losses i'm not gonna lie uh yeah. i thought the weekend was really good i had two outings in a row with my company on thursday and friday so we went nice. out i didn't get sick so that's a win in my book <laughs> and then on saturday i had two old co-workers from my previous workplace come over we hung out ate food chatted play mario party until like 1 a.m and then they left so that was a that was a good night i'm like socially i'm just drained but it's been a good week and that's awesome man I'm, I'm it's always good to be able to catch up with uh friends and uh, i mean especially with covid and things just fine you know opening up like i find the more and more i get together with people the more and more i realized how much i missed it uh but then mm. i also realized that yeah like you said you have to recharge because it's like man I get drained pretty quickly. Like I, my body's not used to to hanging out with people all the time like uh, before. But uh, that's awesome, man. Glad to hear everything's going well. Mitchell, how are you doing? How is uh, boot camp, coding boot camp? How's Seattle? How's uh, life in general, man? Uh, it's going good. It's not too bad. Um, you know, I was just recovering from COVID. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's like, right. Mostly recovered and alive. Um, but yeah. Um, Everything's fine, I guess. I don't know. LCS is really weird. It's yeah. Crazy stuff. TSM, crazy stuff. No <laughs> one seems to be talking about it either. Yeah. yeah uh, let, I mean, let's 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 open up right there because we didn't get to really cover this right as it came out uh, because it happened last week. But TSM pretty much blowing up their roster. I mean, the, but what what made it even like weirder is that okay, first of all, so they let Shen Yi go, right? Well, actually, no. The mm. the order of events wasn't it Huni first. Uh, you know, being announced that he's retiring or whatever, or he's being, uh, you know, he's kind retiring, of retiring, but he didn't say it himself. Yeah. He, they says he was just stepping down to be a coach. And then later on, they clarify he is retiring. Like, I yeah. don't really know what's going on. Usually we have like a big hubbub about it in a nice like community. Yeah. Post, but it was just such a nonsense. And that's the thing. That's what I was getting to with Shen Yi because he it was on the academy team and he's been let go from the academy team. And on his mm. Twitter, he had like really nice things to say, pretty much just saying like, I appreciate all my teammates, the organization, my coaches, all of that stuff. Really nice statement, right? Considering how, yeah. you know, it felt like he was being treated. And then all of a sudden TSM on their Reddit, like, uh, re you know, reply or basically post that Shen Yi is uh, alluding to that he's a problem. That he's a liability, that they can't grow with him. And it almost throwing him under the bus. And uh, so very confusing messages there. He's like, I, it does, doesn't mm -hmm. seem like they're on the same page here. But uh, what are your thoughts about that? And, uh, you know, and then also, yeah, Mitchell, you mentioned tactical was your main issue for them. They got rid of tactical too, right? Well, he's on the on academy for now. But uh, and then they brought in Chime. So lots of stuff and instinct coming in. Mm -hmm. So all these changes, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on them? Yeah, I mean, I would say this is the TSM special. They have some player that's like hyped up from some other region. He plays, that he doesn't really get a fair shot at playing, then gets thrown under the bus. And all the problems are because of Sword Art, or because of Shenyi, or because of uh, whoever like gets imported, whoever gets brought into the team, right? It's always scapegoating. Like Santorin's garbage, and then that he gets kicked off, comes back later as one of the best junglers in the region. Weird how that happens. Or, you know, since Garen's the problem, we'll kick him. It's like, hmm. There are times where that's somewhat true, but I think TSM has a habit of really just piling it all on. Like, no one else is taking accountability. They were saying Shenny is a detriment to our Academy squad, and yeah. like basically Team Solo holding back Academy is what, what Shenny is supposed to be. Um, I think Shenny admits that he did, like, probably misbehave, or, like, he was definitely part of the problem, and I don't think anyone's doubting that, right? Mm -hmm. I think the difference here is, like, Shenny still, like on his way out when he has nothing like he's probably going back to LPL or LDL or wherever he has nothing to lose by saying like 
putting some dirt out there, right? Yeah. And he's just like just a professional. He's like, yeah, I could have done better. I I like thanks TSM for all this time, and like I definitely made some mistakes. And I was like, okay, you know that's a good move. Um, so a little bit looking down on how TSM handles this, but it's not different from the usual. Otherwise, the other moves are good. I think that if Huni has injuries, which I think is true, like he has just like you've heard it on and off for a while now, and like I hope this that's the way we justify how he's been playing. Yeah, right. Um, I it's just so hard to practice when you have those injuries. Like even the really good players can't do it. And then instinct, I mean, his first weekend, and we'll probably talk more about it. But he's already playing really well, and yeah. I think that it is weird that Mia isn't playing still. I thought he was fine. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's just a question of they want to a whole refresh but that was a little weird to me yeah i, I i'm interested to hear <laughs> i was waiting for this i agree with everything you said kevin mitchell i'm ready to hear your thoughts because tactical really you you were kind of hard on him this whole split which rightfully so he was not playing well uh so i want to hear your your thoughts on him being bumped out and instinct being brought in uh to start what are, you, what are your thoughts <laughs> uh i mean it's kind of unfortunate but also crazy what happens like this weekend with instinct i mean he gets like a really crazy fence kill against FlyQuest, and it reminds you of that time when um uh, tsm was getting rid of their adc and they got um wild turtle over chaos oh yeah he gets a pentakill mm -hmm. in his first yep. game and that's really crazy that um that happened again it's uh giving you some big og vibes um, that's true right. i don't know how um which we can like buy into it though because it was on zeri and it was like kind of like in a pretty one-sided game so i don't know it didn't seem like it was like the craziest like pentakill like definitely not like daddy level of pentakill um mm -hmm. but still really good cool stuff to see um it's exciting for instinct but I, I don't know it's still hard for me to judge to just see if like he's just automatically gonna be better than tactical because yeah. um i mean it's been two games but it was, it was still really hype obviously um yeah, I'd be surprised if Tactical was able to come back in anytime soon after yeah. that one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, and just to, I realized that I didn't actually recap the whole roster because there were so many moves going on. I was kind of just spitting them all out. But for those of you listening, if you're kind of like lost as to who, what we're talking about, <laughs> here's TSM's roster, okay, just from top down. Uh, top lane, Huni, so-called retired, uh, and Soul is now playing uh, top lane. Uh, we still have Speaker in the jungle. Uh, and then mid lane, of course, Maple. And then bot lane, Tactical's been moved down to Academy. Um, and Instinct has been bumped up. And then uh, Shenyi was bumped out of the Academy support. Therefore, Mia got bumped down to TSM Academy. And and then TSM got uh, Chime from... I forget, was he on CLG? GG Academy. Uh, GG Academy. Academy. Yeah, so they got Chime, and Chime is now starting for uh, TSM. So... Three fifths of their roster are completely new, and that's kind of what we're we're getting at here. I think Raz said it best on uh, JLXP. I really uh, agree with his point big time here. It seems like TSM is still trying to, you know, respond like TSM of old, where they were winning, where they were a top organization, top tier team, always expected to win. Like we know, you guys have kind of overhauled things, but they still try to act like we need to win now. Um, you know, that if we don't get instant results, then it's time to make moves. Um, they're not treating it as like a developmental roster. And I, and I, I agree with, cause Raz was pretty uh, upset and I agree with him because in a sense that you're putting all these young developmenting, you know, develop, uh, developing team people in there and you're not giving them a chance to grow, to play a whole split. Um, it's this high pressure situation. If you mess up once, or twice, you know, or tactical, like all the time, like, or whatever, if you're a new player, like you're, you're kind of worried about your job right away. And so I don't know if it's the most, uh, pleasant environment for these, these newcomers and it's, <laughs> and they're not given a fair chance. Cause again, like Shanyi goes out there, this stuff from TSM coming out, that's not helping his career, you know, or what about, you know, any, anybody else like soul is now in top lane right now. Like this is kind of crazy because if he's not ready, this could ruin him, you know, because people always go, you know, what you what you look like coming out of the gate. And so um, yeah. I don't know. I'm really worried for that. I mean, that kind of like brings about the, the other aspect of TSM that came out, right, where um, Reginald, he finally got um, fined again or fined. Yep. Um, it was like mm -hmm. $75,000, three times the ma maximum fine that you they normally give out. So 
Uh, that's something I found interesting that no one's talking about, like the Dive yeah. or JLXP or other yeah. podcasts. They're not talking about this like crazy thing that happened to Reggie. Um, I wanted to know, like, is this a big deal or not? Because like the amount of money is not that big of a deal. But like, mm-hmm. what does probation mean? Like, what do these all these terms mean that like it's Riot's own internal like justice system, right? So yeah. they're kind of they're kind of just making up rules too at yeah. the same time. Um, so um, it, it like. The fact that that's happening to Reginald and um, all this other stuff's happening with the roster and like all the decisions are very much like win now sort of like toxic mentality of like not letting anything grow. I, mm-hmm. I think it's kind of like it all feels like it's all connected, like the way that it's run and the, all these complaints that come out about Reginald. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. But yeah, what, what are your guys thoughts on just like that whole thing that we're getting a CEO find or mm-hmm. called out like that? <laughs> Uh, I mean, we've come a long way since like CLG got fined, what, 2 or 4K or whatever for some random thing. And <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, in that sense, it's a bigger fine. It, but like Reggie's a multimillionaire. Like this is such a slap on the wrist in terms of the monetary damage. So in that sense, I don't think it's a big deal. However, the problem is it's a little hard to measure because we don't, we're not using the law, right? This isn't like some legal mm-hmm. probation. This is riots, extrajudicial definition of a probation so depending on how harsh it could be it could be a big deal because sponsors matter and valorant might be um, franchising soon there are rumors that there's going to be a new counter-strike game coming out with a new on the new source engine so valorant wants to franchise sooner than later Mm -hmm. and that timing is really bad if tsm wants to be in the franchise league like if anything they probably will still get in because tsm is such an endemic org but in valorant they're not a big deal they're like Mm. pretty terrible um so with your CEO on probation, like what do sponsors see when they want to sponsor TSM? Like you're not competitive in league anymore. You're so far recently, you're not competitive in Valorant, the two like rising riot esports. You don't have a very good CSGO team or any for a long time, right? You don't have a history there. You, you're okay in Apex, right? And then you're okay in Rainbow Six. Like this TSM is like kind of on the esports side, they're kind of dying. Um, so in that sense, it, it is bad timing for them. And it might hurt them more than it it probably helps them in the sense that like people who know what they're doing could finally make decisions without reggie getting the way however do those people still work there is the question yeah if this happened the last year i think the tsm might be able to turn it around but i think from what it sounds like it's like that's a burning ship they've gone through four supports yeah in the last we're not even done with the year yet we've gone through four supports and they've gone through 280 carries two tops and then Two mids, three mids, yeah. three mids, because Takeover was there too. Takeover. Your yep. son, Mia, Chime, and uh, Shen Yi were on the support side. Like, there's just so many subs. And it's it yeah. feels like they're just trying to put the blame onto other people or say, like, oh, we have a new push now, so let's refresh. But there's no, like, real structure. There's no system. I can't even meme about their system because it's so yeah. bad. It's It's almost as if, like... It's almost as if like Reggie is still making the moves when he's not actually making the moves because the management style is it's so like, I don't know, it is so to me at least kind of just like the mentality that has always been there. But the difference is that a lot of upper management, you know, Reggie, Parth, Lena, all of them, like are they're all gone. Right. And yet it still seems like the same decision making process is happening. Um, so either there's people who are following the, the code book or there's still problems within leadership there because you've got to be kidding me. This is not a good look. Like, why are you being so like pressured to like win? And I think Raz also said this. I'm really like harping on Raz because he did a good job, uh, you know, I think. Um, but he also, you know, made a good point in that, like, if you just communicate to the league or communicate socially that, we are developing, I think people get it because you lost like your big like impact player members, coaches, you know, management, even Bjergsen leaving, right? So there's a, a bunch of stuff going on there. If you just say, hey, we're, we're building up, I think the fans and everybody else would, uh, you know, give some slack, some sle- uh, leeway there. But the fact that they're still trying to be like, yeah, we're, we're going to be good. We're going to get all this talent, go from the LPL and then just give up just like that. Like it doesn't it doesn't really seem like it's it's matching, um, you know, and I think they just need a different way of communicating things. But either way, um, I am in the same agreement that TSM, this is this might be 
at least in the in the league scene for me, I think, especially if Spica decides to leave, like I think TSM is in the gutter of like CLG status um, because nobody's going to want to touch this team. Not in not in the league uh, part of it, at least. I mean, if anybody follows uh, the league scene remotely, they'll see the burning ship. And I don't know if sponsors are going to really be jumping out at that or not. So if, to me, yes, the monetary monetary uh, punishment's not that bad, but losing your reputation like that, I actually think, you know, I don't know. Is that a bold take that I'm saying that they're going to get the CLG levels? Do you guys think that it's going to get that bad? Cause I do. I really, I really do. Especially if speaker leaves. I'd say they aren't going to get the CLG levels. And so they'll get to CLG levels, maybe in terms of competitiveness. Like, do you want to be on this roster or whatever, all that, but I don't think they're going to get the CLG levels in terms of like, they could be removed for like, whatever that rumor and Mr. Beast team coming in or whatever. Right. TSM's not getting removed from the league. That's Unless true. they do something like truly heinous and like are trying to lose their spot. They're never going to be removed because they're still to this day. They still have like people who are just waiting to be TSM fans, like mm-hmm. want to be fans, but they just, no, they're trying their darndest to not give a reason for fans to cheer for them. Like in a different universe, a Maple Speaker core is like really exciting. And if you could just get, you got a young talent getting a pentakill in his second game ever, mm-hmm. and on um, uh, the LCS stage, or maybe it was the third game. He might have subbed in randomly when they were subbing supports, uh, subbing in their academy team less. But either way, I think it's possible that they they fall to the competitive level of CLG. But like I. Uh, it's still worth something to be a TSM player uh, still because they've been so good for so long. There's so much history. Mm-hmm. They're basically synonymous with LCS and LCS is like on the decline too. It's not a coincidence when TSM's decline, the LCS is declining. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I, can I see that. think uh, uh, TSM, I mean, it's not even that bad. Like they just uh, won a game against FlyQuest and then CLG. <laughs> I mean, they're not even that bad either because they're kind of mm-hmm. like in this area where they're playing okay. They're winning some games and they're being sort of competitive against the better team. So I don't know. It's not that bad for either team. I even feel like um, all of our lower teams kind of stepped up. Like that was kind of the theme of this weekend where like Immortals, they had, they won their game against C9. That was weird. And then they had was a really, really close weird. game mm-hmm. in their first game as well. Um, Dignitas, I mean, they also won a game. Like, I don't know. It's uh, all of our teams kind of doing something interesting this weekend. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it's, um, yeah, no, not I, that I, bad out there. You no, know, we can do I'm, it. I yeah. am just calling it. So th- this is this is kind of a prediction for me, too, is that I do think uh, I'm going to hold fa- fast to my uh, position on this. And I do think TSM is actually going to fall down the drain. I, I agree in a sense that the, I, there, there was never a threat. Like with CLG, there was almost a threat where it looked like like they might actually be out <laughs> of the the league altogether. I don't think that's the case with TSM. But I do think it's going to be a while before they can even get competitive levels of like Dignitas. Like CLG up until this point was like last place for the past two years. That's the the route that I think TSM's going. I think it's going to be a really long time before they can get not just the play, the right players, but even the the staff around them to get them to a level like a fifth place, sixth place team. Uh, I think the other teams are stepping up, but that's because they've had time, right? Like they are developing. Um, So I think TSM, this is actually, it's it's them hitting rock bottom and saying, okay, now we've got to basically rebuild a new generation of TSM like legends. Uh, It's the old guard is done. We need to do that. So that's that's where I'm going to hold fast. I, I could be totally wrong, and you guys will be right, but it's it's fun to speculate. And maybe I just want to be a TSM fan again. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, real quick, the difference between TSM and CLG, too, is TSM can probably afford yes, to afford ramp it. up when they're yeah. ready to. Like, they have a successful esports business in the back yeah. end. I don't know if CLG has a successful esports business. I, I, I'd venture it's not great. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, and I, I definitely agree with that, hundred um, percent. All right, let's let's move on from TSM. Forget about that team. Let's talk about the real team, Team Liquid. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, not so great. And I said Team Liquid first because we're actually going to be talking about EG and Team Liquid when they played, uh, because that was kind of the highlight match of the week. And EG is number one. All right, they they mm-hmm. they've proven it um, up until this point. Yes, we can beat Team Liquid. We're number one. Uh, so let's talk about that game and EG in general because they are. The champs that, you know, and they're looking good. I, there's no been no slump, like we've been saying, and they've been firing on all cylinders. Um, I honestly think that they're just clicking. They're just 
starting to play together well, in my opinion. Uh, it seems like they've hit a groove. What are your thoughts on EG? All right, I'm gonna start off real quick with some copium, and then we'll we'll go with the real thoughts. <laughs> yes, uh, okay. copium. Everyone's saying Danny played an amazing game that game. I think he played well, but like he's playing Ezreal, and I. Okay, as a jungler, if I'm playing Volibear and I've got Aatrox, Volibear, Zillion, Nami, and then AD cares Lucian, and I have Ezreal Yumi, like, are you really under that much threat? Like, what is actually holding you down if you're not behind? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what happened. So, it, to me, it wasn't that hard of a game to outplay in. I think that Liquid was playing too much towards Han Sama, and that's a bad decision. We'll go into it when we talk about Liquid more. But yeah. EG played to their outs. They had a good comp. They knew what they were going to do. I do think Ezreal Yumi can sometimes be very hit or miss. Like, it's like there's that, like, 0-3 Ezreal Yumi thing that still sticks in my mind from C9 days in playoffs. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Danny can execute on it, on, like, Sven. So, uh, I'll, I'll give him credit there. I think EG is the only team to be undisputed first in their region after MSI, right? The MSI teams. Mm -hmm. So, that's great. Honestly, like, I'm all for the new blood, like, looking consistent, looking, like, they know what they're doing, and we've been praising them week over week. We we're just kind of saying, like, can they beat Liquid? And they did. Yeah. And they did it very convincingly. So, honestly, I don't know if it hurts Liquid's case as much as just, like, EG's number one, Liquid's, like, second or third still. Because they still are second on the standings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, EG is really good. Uh, I think they're, yeah, they're definitely the best team in the league right now. Um, that's definitely the case. I, I would say over the side of TL, I did kind of feel like their bot lane was running it down like really hard. Oh, um, yeah. Definitely Corey JJ just dying repeatedly. Actually inting, it felt like, just getting caught on repeatedly and dying. Um, and then Hansama, I mean, he had that legendary flash over the wall. That was sick. Oh, my gosh. Flash flashed in there right in the middle of EG. Just get blown that, up. Was... that was hype. Um, oh, my gosh. I, I loved know. it when Kobe called out that on the cast. I thought yeah. that was hilarious. Um, I don't know. It, honestly, it felt like Bwipo was playing the best, at least mechanically, yeah, on, on their so. team, even though he had the worst score. He actually looked like he was executing on his combos to, like, get some good Aatrox damage. But I don't know. It, it, like, even Bjergsen, right? There was a very pitiful fight at Baron where he... Uh, ran out of mana. He didn't have any mana for ulti, mm -hmm. and he just kept chucking bombs and throwing E's and W's <laughs> out, and it's like, maybe you should have just waited. Uh, you would have had ulti, and you could have ulted Hansama. Hansama could have maybe kept fighting, because it was... Um, they actually clutched out a, a couple of kills uh, from Whippo and, and Hansama. So, I don't know. This team is really... It's, I guess we just gotta wait till playoffs, right? Because maybe they could just be sandbagging the regular season like other teams. So, it's yeah. hard to say. Hard to have any judgments. Um, but yeah, Team Liquid is kind of worrying me. They, they, that was pretty bad. I thought a lot of the decisions they made, yeah. um, were really monkey, but yeah, I mean, EG is crazy. Uh, Danny is just really insane. It feels like this team's like only kind of trying, but they just win team fights no matter what. Um, yeah, I get yeah. that same vibe. I get that same vibe. Like they're not really trying, but I think that they're just in such a groove right now. Like they played so many games together, like with MSI and then coming right back. And then they had a little break, which is fine. But honestly, I feel like this team is, like I said it earlier, just like I think they're clicking. I think their chemistry is yeah. there. Um, JoJo is still performing solid. I mean, he's not, I feel like he's not trying to do too much. It seems like he's kind of calmed down a little bit and is just playing the game, just letting it come to him a little bit and and his score lines might might not be like carry level stuff but he's playing pretty well uh and oh, inspired yeah. is honestly being where he needs to be just playing great jungle overall impact i actually wrote this note down on i think their first game against dignitas oh my gosh he is the king of being tilt proof that guy was yeah. getting camped so <laughs> hard and yeah. it didn't even matter like i he just is chilling i could see him he's just you know hanging out he's like it's fine it's fine it's fine and sure enough, it's it's fine. So and then Danny, of course, just great. And Vulcan is, you know, I, I still hit or miss for me. But again, like they have kind of a good synergy, good kind of identity now. I do feel like they just have so many reps together and so many reps of them winning. I think they're just letting in a groove, letting the game come to them. I think it is a lot easier right now specifically to talk about Team Liquid because of all the ugly stuff we're seeing. It's kind of hard when 
you know, EG is just winning. I mean, and there's not much to it. They're just playing better, playing as a team better, getting objectives better uh, and, and that stuff. So they're doing what they should do. But Team Liquid, I think the expectations are supposed to be like, hey, you guys, this is your second chance, right? To come back and prove that that was just a fluke. You guys are number one. But let's go focus in a little bit more on there because, um, you know, we and <laughs> it's funny because Alistair definitely mentioned this on Discord since he couldn't be here. He said, talk about Han Sama. And you, we, mm-hmm. we talked about a little a little bit of, about this earlier, but let's keep on going there because I want to press into this a little bit more. I don't understand what is going on with this bot lane. This bot lane should be amazing. And uh, Han Sama on Lucian, every time he's picked it and he's, they picked it a lot, this Lucian Nami lane, which I'm still kind of scratching my head over uh, on some games, like why why they keep picking this comp uh, and then not being able to execute it. But Han Sama is just playing like, he's crazy. Like he's going in so hard and maybe it's because he had a zillion, right? Um, and is figuring I can just play balls to the wall, but he just played so careless to me. And then when he would get zillion ulted, it was like the worst timing. Like everyone's already dead and he's like right in the middle of all of them and he revives and they just kill him instantly. So, uh you know, it's kind of good we're starting with you, Kevin, a Team Liquid fan. I'm sure you'll be able to pick up, you know, pick them apart a little bit more. But what are your thoughts on them? Dig into them a little bit more. What do they need to fix? Um, so my thoughts on I think Hansama currently has just been playing at a much lower level than we just saw from last split or even just what we expect from him. I think that he's made a lot of very obvious and glaring, like, mistakes. And it's not just Hansama. Like, him and Core just clearly are making mistakes in lane and then it's translated to Core is not playing like he was last split. Like, he was playing a much better split last split comparatively to this split. And, like, uh, I think Hans... The Lucian Ami lane, first of all, I don't... I mean, I don't I don't think so highly of it. I've watched a lot of other regions yeah. where they keep trying to make it work. And sometimes it does. Like, Liquid is 2-1 with Lucian, strangely. But uh, it's against worse teams. It was against yeah. Golden Guardians and it was against Immortals. So, uh I'm fine with them trying this. I'm fine with them trying to make like aggressive lanes work because we're it's much better than like what people lambast um, Team Liquid for traditionally, right? Which is the sit back, play like a hundred thieves. We know we're better, so we'll scale and then see what happens. They've been trying to push the tempo. This is the first game in a long time where I saw Zillion. I was just like, wow, that was just not it today. Like mm-hmm. I thought I saw the idea, and the, it felt like they had never played it together in scrims or something. Like the Lucian was just like. Oh, I guess I can int for free when I have this all. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, I don't think that's how it works. And sometimes, like, you would see Bjergsen just give up alts on like a low health character just mm-hmm. so that he could alt Lucian. Then Lucian would just die because everyone else is already dead around. I was like, is that really how we're gonna play this? Uh, the, the exact play Mitchell was talking about, where Bjergsen ran out of mana and just kept chucking bombs. That was literally mm-hmm. a play where someone could easily have been res, and he just for for went it, and then. <laughs> Lucian died also. I was like, okay, this is just nonsense. Yeah. This is so painful to watch. Um, because there was no mana for all, so Lucian just died anyways. Mm-hmm. I think Hazam has the biggest drop off from what we saw last split, just literally last split or week one. I think Core JJ is underperforming. I think Santor is still playing well. Um they've, yeah, got, they've yeah. gotten some good setups and like first bloods or trades after bot lane like dies for some reason. He'll always like try to get a trade mid or something. I think Bjergsen's okay. Um, but I do think he's could still be playing better or like maybe they should be playing around mid a bit more in terms of like where the support rooms go and where the resources go and i think Blipple is playing fine as well so it really largely goes down to bot lane uh in my mind as the biggest like loss and everyone's not playing to their level that's the biggest yeah disappointment for, sure. for me Mitchell, what you what you groaning about over there i <laughs> see squirming over your uh, <laughs> what, are you, what are you thinking yeah, no, I mean, I was just, I said I was going to come to the split ready to be very harsh on this team. <laughs> yeah, that's um, right. I, this team sucks, man. They actually, <sighs> they suck. They, it's, okay, they're obviously not terrible, and they can still make a, a high run at playoffs and maybe even go to Worlds still, but, like, yeah. I definitely think their bot lane is super checked out, playing at just a fraction of what we've seen them play recently. Um so that I don't know why either. It doesn't really make sense. It kind of feels like they just don't have hands. Um, mm-hmm. It's hard to pinpoint like, what the exact problem is or like what's bothering people about it. It does feel like they just don't have reaction timing and they kind of just die. Yeah. Can, and, like it doesn't seem like they're doing anything terribly egregious. You just you just find them dead randomly at times. Hansama and Gorja J. Um, and then with Bjergsen, it just feels like he's also not doing anything terribly wrong, but. He's not like making the thing 
like he's not making the game winning play or he's not making the thing that you need to win the game. Um, and it doesn't feel like a lot of people on this team have that sort of you're right ability to just you know this is what we need to make a close game like this is what we need to win right it's like they either snowball and they just keep on going and steamrolling like in the golden guardians game or they don't find a lead and they can't seem to ever get their way into that game to win it uh they can't clutch it out so um it's yeah, I don't as, know. This, this team's it's, sad. <laughs> it's almost as if, like, if they swapped, like, Bjergsen for JoJo or something, you know, where, like, you have somebody who can have the hands. Because you, you kind of got yeah. four supports with you, uh, is what it kind of feels like. Like, everybody's kind of being in a supportive role. Or nobody can, is at that, like, carry role, right? Or even if you swap Danny with Han Sama in this position, I don't know. Maybe let Danny scale and then let him be the, the carry, right? Because that's kind of what EG does, right? Um, but I, I have yeah. to agree with you, like with what you're saying is that there is not a player on there that I feel like can be like, yeah, I'm I'm going in, I'm killing all of them and you guys are just going to help me do that. Um, but I agree in a sense that now, Kevin, you've kind of opened my eyes with you saying that, yeah, that you're right. We are kind of tired of them just sitting back, scaling, waiting for you to make a mistake like 100 Thieves and and then just winning that way. I do think it's fine that they try to, you know, experiment in in their bot lane because that is kind of where their their carry can be but i just don't think they have the hands for it like you said mitchell i don't think they're trying to play like these hyper aggressive like we take over in laning phase get every dragon bot lane but it just doesn't seem like they're able to do that and it's almost like they're trying to force this like style of play when it doesn't fit the personnel uh so to speak um they might be trying it's not working um so i don't know uh, why they keep trying to hammer this this uh, on the, on the head? Um, yeah, Kevin, what's up? Well, my counterpoint is one: they have a sixteen hundred gold gold differential on fifteen minute average. Meanwhile, EG has a five hundred. Just just for like a comparison point. While hundred thieves is negative one forty seven. Like those are the three teams in the top three. Okay, so they're yeah. actually doing a good job on average of like trying to push the tempo of course they fail sometimes especially against better teams right but they've been pushing the tempo in all their games their first tower rate 78 percent and eg's is or 67 percent so like they are doing stuff around the map on average and it's like it is working it's just when they fail especially against the better teams like it just looks like crap it looks like yeah. absolute crap because they're like like the the fact of the matter is like globally right now bot lane is the most important lane to play towards like most teams are winning through their bot lanes or at least like have like a lot of their plan based off the bot lane. You see lots of bot lane bans. You see like, what is it? You see Def getting bans against his like his Callista and LCK and stuff like that. Like there's a lot of bullshit in bot lane is how I feel about it. Yeah. So they, uh, in my mind, if I'm being copium, they're trying to play through bot. And I think they on paper should have the hands, but clearly like Han Sama is just playing so poorly that his right. current hands are nowhere near world's level but like what yeah. would you rather have would he would you rather him play Jin, ash utility ad carries and then they make it to worlds and then just be bad i think that's like yeah well bad. i mean i guess you make a fair point because even against eg um their their early game failed actually and i think it was hans or core died first right or whatever um, but they yep. still managed to kind of regain the momentum again so maybe i'm saying it wrong in, in a sense that uh they're you know because it doesn't seem like they steamroll um you know bot lane early game but you're right they get advantages but it does seem like uh when it comes mid to late game they're team fighting uh particularly hans uh, and then core getting caught out randomly like that doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be good i guess that's my problem though is that with early like lane dominant you know laners like a lucian nami which they picked quite a bit um to me it just feels like they're not getting the leads they need to in order to be really good in the team fights and in their team fights like i said we're seeing pretty bad positioning um and so if that's the case like you know and that yeah in that case i'd rather have him on a hyperscaler right if he can't position properly or uh, they can't play around him uh, so that he can kind of be more aggressive. So you you make a good point, and 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 I I guess I need to clarify is that I do think that it's fine if they want to get an advantage in early lane, and it seems like they're working on that, and and it's working. But I think they need to reassess the champion pool and the champions from which to do that because it just doesn't seem like Lucian Nami is is it 
Uh, for, I mean, for, well, for for everyone who's watching the league, they're starting to nerf enchanters. By the time Worlds comes in, I mm-hmm. think there's going to be probably a slight bias toward engaged supports again. And once that happens, Liquid will be fine. Like, yeah. honestly, yeah. Core JJ is just so good at engaging for teams. That's how he's made his... That's just how he's done his, yeah, like... that's right. That's how he's made it, uh, got his paychecks in the last, like, years in NA, right? So... He has played one game of engaged or two, Alistar and Rakan, and he's won both this game this mm-hmm. season. The second he goes back to engaged supports, they're going they're going to fix a lot of problems. Now, is that does that mean they're a good team? I don't know, you know. But every team that has won worlds, except for Dom one, I would say recently, has been like very, like they just really good at one thing or one like specific group of things. And like once the meta shifts, they fall off. Right? Yeah. Dom one I think was good in a lot of things, but all the other, all the other teams have won worlds and MSI has just been kind of one dimensional ish. But in a good way. They knew what they wanted to do. And so when we get I'll back take that. Support, I'll take that copium. I think I'll I think I'll take that copium. It's just fact. Core Core <laughs> yeah, is a true. god on Rakan. He's one I agree. Of, he, every time he picks Rakan, it's it feels like right. an instant win. No, no, I totally agree. And that's why I I'll take it. Like I, I can I can bang <laughs> my copium on that because that, that seems like a real uh you know probability, you know, with engaged supports coming back. People better fear core. Um okay, well let's go on then to hundred thieves. Uh, because they're tied with Team Liquid for second. But again, this is the team we've been saying, like, are they up? Are they down? What are we really watching here? Uh, they lose to FlyQuest, which I think I had predicted them to FlyQuest to win on my pick uh, mm-hmm. But then, you know, they beat CLG, which CLG was kind of middle of the pack at, at this point. Um, so what what are your thoughts on 100 Thieves from what you saw this week? Um, are they swaying your mind anyways? What did you think of their game against Fly FlyQuest? Because... Um, again, I I can't really put a finger on this team yet. Yeah. Um. So their loss, like you can excuse it in the sense that they tried to be like creative and they tried to do stuff they basically never do. They put Huhi on Yasuo. Like I haven't seen him on Yasuo since he was a mid laner. So, yeah. uh, that was cool. Like honestly, I'll give them props for trying it. They got crushed. Like they, <laughs> yeah. they just couldn't yeah. do it. Um. <laughs> but <laughs> honestly, that's good. That's good to try. Uh, Abadage seems to just. Be stuck uh, stuck on just like I will say like he's not terrible after laning phase, but his just like early game has been so abysmal that I'm just like what happened to this player? But he's been just put on Corky, Azir, like control mages, Ari, like that's just what he's played all split. So I think this team at least they're trying stuff. I'll give him credit. It just clearly like you see what happens when they try stuff, right? A team around there where he just like slaps them down, beats them in 27 minutes, and it looks terrible. Um, I. Other than that, their bot lane's still not there. That that's that's the takeaway. I'll keep repeating it until I see like a real sign of life over more than one game. Yeah. Yeah. I well, I would say with hundred thieves, it's hard to say that like it's hard to give them props for trying because it felt like in that comp where they had so many go buttons with like mm-hmm. Wukong and Gragas uh, with the Yasuo, like they didn't actually try. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they gave up every single dragon without fighting. <laughs> um, the, like the last dragon where FlyQuest, they thought the 100 Thieves was going to contest, so they just kept the dragon around leashed, yeah. and they just they they were afraid of taking it because they're like 100 Thieves is going to do something, right? But they don't mm-hmm. know that Close already left, and he was already doing his Krugs, and he wasn't even anywhere close to trying to steal the dragon. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. That to me really felt like 100 Thieves was just actually not playing the game. Um, that was felt like win trading, honestly. That game was so uninteractive from the side of 100 Thieves. It felt like they just threw in the towel at the very beginning. For, I, I, for, I have no idea why. Mm. Um, but, I mean, good for FlyQuest. They they closed it out really cleanly. But, um, yeah, 100 Thieves, they were completely dead in the water. I have no idea where they were for that game. That was super bizarre that they didn't try at all um, to play. So, yeah, I... I don't know what to say about that. Yeah. And the thing is, their their win against CLG that that felt more like just CLG giving them the win because that game was ugly. Like uh, I I don't know. Like I think Hundred Thieves, you know, uh, I really can't say one way or the other because if you know I spotlight one game, um, I could just spotlight or uh, in a negative way on you know the other side with a different game, right? Because it's always up and down and up and down. So for now. I'm still reserving my my final thoughts with them. I, to me, they still feel like a th- third, fourth place team. 
um, just because, I mean, I don't even know about C9 at the moment, right? But uh, I guess just because there really is, like, the top teams aren't looking that great, like, I still think they're holding on to, like, third or fourth, um, and that's probably where they'll end up. Um, yeah. But all the, team, all the teams feel super weird. Yeah. Like, besides EG, there's no real yeah. team that's, like, fully able to perform at, like, where you expect them. Every team seems to have some weird level of underperforming. We're like, that was that was kind of a weird game. You didn't really do anything there, and you lost. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So. yeah and it seems like I feel that like right too, now, too. Just, Yeah, it's just super weird. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, here's here's something interesting, though. Okay, so they we talk about that FlyQuest game. FlyQuest, again, this, they're somebody we've been speaking pretty highly of on this podcast. Um, and when they beat 100 Thieves, I was like, wow, this is just proving our point, right? We're like, look at us, right? But then they go and they lose the, their next <laughs> game. And I'm just like, what are they doing, right? Like, uh, you know, and it almost felt like they pulled 100 Thieves on me, right? Because they lose to TSM, who just blooped their roster. Not only did they lose, they got destroyed. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. What do you think? Was that just a fluke game by by FlyQuest? Because I, I do think this is still a good roster, I still think they're, you know, possibly fourth or fifth place team. Uh, but again, kind of, it should have been 2-0 two, two and oh this weekend, and it wasn't. So that had me kind of take a step back a little bit from the hype train. But what are your thoughts on FlyQuest? I mean, my thoughts on FlyQuest is if they had won this game, they would have been undisputed second place above Liquid because they right. would be on a four-game win streak, same record as the other second place teams, but they'd just be 100 Thieves recently as well. Uh, if you really look into the matchup, like this is very, you know, after the fact revisionist, right? Like I still would have voted FlyQuest to win, but mm-hmm. speak of Mabel, I've been solid. A lot of the split, like they get first blood or they get second blood and they, the combo like has been getting kills around the map and then they collapse because they just like don't have a bot lane when tactical was there or the mm-hmm. top laner is just running it, right? Like it, it's impossible to play the game through that. Uh, I don't necessarily think Sol had a very good first game, but like he was fine in this game. And I think the bot lane was good enough. Whereas if you if you cancel out Takui and Jose Diodo, like what does FlyQuest have? Like Philip yeah. is not a hyper carry player, right? And their bot lane is good, but if your mid is just complete crushed and you just get roamed upon by Spiko, who is still an insane player, it's just much that bot lane can do. Johnson and Afro Mood like can't get ahead and they can't get going. And they just never let there were no outs, right? So this was a bad matchup on paper. If if this was just a normal world, like Spika Maple playing well, beating Tuki and Jose Diodo is just going to win. Um, it, the only thing that's weird about it is that they should be collapsed. Like their mental should be collapsed. They shouldn't be able to pull this off. And like they snowballed it well. I I don't really have much else to say other than this is how TSM has been playing. They have they have good players, right? Especially in mid and jungle. They just don't have coaching <laughs> don't have, yeah. <laughs> don't have I, coaching yeah yeah i um uh, i thought this that i mean the game for me felt very much like FlyQuest. um i don't know especially aframu and their bot lane it just felt like they just were serving them up just real nice mm-hmm. and easy for tsm to pick up for free um yep. so a bit of running it down i thought from FlyQuest um in the game so it, it's still hard for me to judge tsm on it and like where they're like how good they are because they had this crazy stomp but then they also had a really uh pretty pretty like uh uninteresting loss the day before mm-hmm. um so it, yeah it felt like FlyQuest was definitely um like underestimating them thinking they're just going to be some like crappy academy team yeah. um but i think tsm yeah they, they're probably better than that um yeah, I don't know. I I'm interested to see because if it'd be really cool if this team ended up being good, uh, because uh, we'd have more rookies in the region that are performing at a high level, and it would uh, take more stock into us trying out our newer players. Um, so I would love it if this team was good. Conflicting, that's TSM, but um, whatever, I'll take it. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I but, also. Uh, I'm, I, yeah, I mean, I also think like specifically against the TSM uh, and the TSM game, like I, I don't know if I'm convinced with Corky anymore, man. Like that, that chip just for some reason just didn't feel like it. I mean, I get it if you hit like that carry with the big rocket and it does like a ton of damage. But I just hate the fact that that's all you're really building up the whole game for. It's like you're sucky early game. You can't roam to anything. And which is what they couldn't get any early advantages. And it just felt like 
Takui he couldn't get to that point, and even when he did, like you know, get to the point with his rockets doing damage, he couldn't get to any of them. I mean, he instinct is far back. Like you know, Maple's just playing Swain Drain Tank. I mean, they they have Spica. Like I don't know, it just felt like his rockets could do nothing, and so I just I don't know about Corky uh, at the moment, unless you know the comp is is right, yeah. but. It's. I feel like it's very dependent on your teammates being able to set you up for a good package. Mm -hmm. I think like that's where Corky really starts to snowball is he can get a good package fight. Yeah. That's when he starts like starting to just take over fights in terms of positioning and like shooting people. So like if they don't have that good package fight where your opponent or your teammates like got a good engage and set you up to get a bunch of good kills, I think that's where he can start to feel as bad. But he always has that insurance though too, which. I, I still think he's a great pick. It's just he's a he's a scaling pick. So yeah. if you don't get to a certain point, he kind of sucks. And, but he always gets to a certain point that he becomes stupid, ridiculous. Mm -hmm. and so I still think he's pretty good. It's just, <clears throat> you know, sometimes the game is too fast and you didn't scale yeah. fast enough. And that that's why that's sometimes true. it looks bad. But mm -hmm. I don't know if you can just wait a little bit longer or land a couple extra uh, skill shots. Like Corky always finds value, I think. Because, yeah. well interactive well, folk <laughs> luckily he's get, he got super nerfed on the recent patches so yeah um for next weekend yeah so maybe so we'll all these teams that have been crutching on quirky are now free yeah from... <laughs> or they're probably like let's get it in now because it might not be good uh next yeah. week um i don't know I, you, you didn't really build that much ap uh, mm -hmm. You only built Ludens as your AP item. Everything else is an it's AP true. item. So I don't know how much it'll do. It'll it'll definitely nerf it a, a, like a little bit, but um, yeah, might not take him out of uh, competitive play. Yeah, I will say also in that game specifically, uh, you know, because Soul was you know basically talking his trash coming in right and he got dumpstered uh, by C nine by Fudge. Uh, but I mean, he did end up playing this game uh, decently. I mean, he was up against Philip and other. Uh, rookie and uh, it seemed like he he played all right um so i mean kind of mixed mixed results for me with with him but um what about uh you know clg and cloud nine because this is kind of like the next tier of teams uh because cloud nine again <laughs> we you know this is a team that we're expecting to be th third fourth um but again they they just you know they're still working out the kinks with their finalized roster um, and so I want to get your thoughts on them as well as CLG again, you know, are, is CLG going to still be middle of the pack or what, but any of those two teams, what are your thoughts on, on kind of this middle of the road? Yeah. So on the good news is cloud nine's four and two since the real roster started, right? That yeah. is respectable. That That's enough to get you like second or third, uh, depending on what point in the split we're at. And so like in that sense, they're doing well, they have like, I mean, they have people who have role swapped recently some people are literally learning new roles so in that sense that's good i think the bad side though is the ways they have lost the games they've lost the two were bad berserker and zen did not play well in their immortals loss in my opinion and that's strange to me like immortals is like that one there's like the soup or whatever we always call it <laughs> and then there's immortals and i felt like lost ignored like styled on them like in lane mm -hmm. at least and then throughout the game lost played it Honestly, he played a really good game um, against them. He played a perfect Callista game, basically. He, like, saved Ignar, like, 15 times, it felt like. And he was just playing... Uh, he was playing his spacing really well and doing a lot more damage. I thought while Berserker's score was good, I just didn't feel that much impact from him. Uh, them losing to Immortals and then FlyQuest is super concerning because judging by the trajectory they're going, they'll probably be, like, right outside of top two, right, when they get to playoffs. And that means they will be facing, like, a FlyQuest or something in a yeah. best of five if they can't like close out these games against teams that they should be able to beat like i can't consider them a top three team mm -hmm. um so i don't think they're there yet they still need time to the jello so they're lucky that you know it's only halfway through the split and they have time but them losing to immortals is like yeah it's surprising who did immortals beat other than them like uh, let me check real quick they only yeah, beat I mean, fly quests immortals definitely uh they played <laughs> a lot differently this weekend like yeah they did not seem like they were ever trying up until this weekend pretty much <laughs> <Yeah>. um <laughs> so i mean i think that has something to do with it because even against their loss uh against clg the day before it, it, it felt like they were at least trying like they were going for mm -hmm. plays um and then this one i mean it was um 
yeah, they just kept going for plays nonstop, honestly. Um, for the Callista Nautilus, they just kept kept fighting over and over and over again, and it kept working out. So I thought that was pretty cool to watch. Um, it's it's good to see that you know, and even uh, like at least our lower teams are trying and punching, where sometimes it does feel like they can just give up and not just stop caring. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's a bummer for Cloud Nine that they lose, but hey, I mean, I I thought it was cool to see Immortals like, you know get tired of being trash talked all the time <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the league you know it's like yeah. hey they actually did something they beat a really up their team so um mm-hmm. i mean i hope they keep it going because um no one wants to see these teams basically show up and do nothing and then lose and then be forgotten right because that's, that's what it felt like immortals was, was on that track just show up lose you know, give the the enemy team their 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 dub and then go home. But uh, <laughs> I ho- I hope they keep fighting. I hope they keep playing because this is like you know it's important. Like Kenvi um, and Revenge, these are North American players and they deserve good practice time and a good team and a good chance to prove their career. So I'm happy that this roster is doing something at least. C9, I don't know, just stop trolling. Yeah, they're just they're doing a whole bunch of trolling. I'm, yeah jensen especially he is not doing well <laughs> mm-hmm. he um i felt like he had a really rough game uh against tsm on the leblanc he was like their one avenue that the enemy team could get kills on and then in this game on the azir he actually just did nothing he just farmed afk'd kind of did nothing and then, and then they lost so you do nothing um, <laughs> yeah um mm-hmm. so c9 still got some stuff to work on i think uh yeah they're just i don't know they're just they seem very new they seem like they're just very new at playing with each other still so i guess they need yeah. more time they're just a bunch of talented players just like kind of messing around yeah i think i think you're right about that i mean again um their record is uh, you know four and two uh they're still got having to work out kinks um so it's like i guess you could be cautiously optimistic because uh, this is a team that, um, you know, still has potential, but uh, we have to see them. We, what we're going to have to see is from week to week, are they are they improving on these things? Because uh, that will be the real concern is like if we don't see them like actually improving, then you have to worry if they can actually get it together by the time playoffs comes around. Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, on CLG, it is interesting that they're in the same spot right now because mm-hmm. if you ignore their week one, they're two and four. So they've same result at the end, but one had a 3-0 first week and one had an 0-3. I think CLG is interesting uh, in their spot right now because, well, yes, they lost 100 Thieves and they you know, beat Immortal, sure. Uh, they've beaten pretty much every team uh, below them, except for the only thing that they've beaten that's above them is EG, which is a great win to have, right? Like, they're the only team to beat EG. Um, mm-hmm. And this wasn't like week one EG. This was week two EG. So... I think CLG is probably in a good spot. They're probably going to feel like a Dignitas of old where like, you know, you can beat, you're like the gatekeeper to the playoffs well, if it was a six team playoffs. And if they can pull that off again, where they beat all the teams lower than them, like they're going to solidly not be in the bottom two of playoffs and they'll at least have another life. Uh, I don't think their current trajectory looks like they're going to go further than that, but like, this is a huge improvement for the team. Like they could end fifth or sixth at the rate they're going. Um, if you ignore the fact that they've lost most of their recent games, <laughs> uh, if they can repeat the same record, that that's honestly pretty respectable because as long as you beat the people worse than you, you can still like maintain a good look and you're not, what was it? Ninth or 10th or eighth, whatever they've been perennially. So yeah. it's a good look for them. Um, I don't know how they won that EG game still. It's- but yeah, I mean, and you're right. The, the only losses they have, even though they've lost recently, their only losses are against teams that are better than them, theoretically. You know, 100, uh, 100 Thieves, Team Liquid, Cloud9, and then FlyQuest, right? Like, those are teams that they should lose to. And hey, look, if they pick up a surprise win against, you know, EG or one of the top teams and can still hold their own against the obviously worst teams, that that is a great spot because it gives them something to build on, um, you know, so that next year they can improve whatever their biggest weakness was this split. Um, but you need something. You need some kind of baseline. They need to know how to win games. And that seems like it's happening now. Like they know how to win games. They're winning games. Um, hopefully they're they're learning <laughs> like how to win games. And it's not just like, what did we do there to win? Like hopefully they're understanding like how as a team, this roster that they have, 
they're able to put these wins together because then they can build on top of that. My concern really is is contracts still because I feel like contracts is the key. When he plays well, I think this team plays well. When he doesn't, it just is uh, really bad. Like it just doesn't look like um, they're a team at all. So I, to me, he he's kind of the hinge point. Um, I think you know every everyone else is going to do them, but I I just feel like the game is really swayed depending on what contracts is is doing. Uh, what are you, what are your thoughts about that, Mitchell? I mean, what, do you do you agree yeah. disagree? I definitely think contracts is a very coin flip player for them. Yeah. Um, when he does well, the, their team does well. When he doesn't do well, they look really bad because um, he is always so aggressive about invading in the early game. So mm-hmm. he's always going in. So if they don't have the draft to support that, it does feel like he's pulling his team into bad scenarios sometimes. Um, I also feel like mm, Dokla in the top lane, he has been playing well, but sometimes I f- do feel like he picks too greedy like he is always picking champions that are very self-sufficient and very like like good for him like to carry and stuff and um in the most recent game against uh, 100 thieves they already had a a azir jinx uh nautilus bot lane and he still opted into going fiora top lane and it just kind of feels like when you have you know jinx uh azir nautilus it's like maybe you just pick a tank in top lane you know you don't need the fiora to, to carry up there and um i i if it's like these little things that um they do kind of add up to your number of wins and losses and like i don't know if they would have won if they had a tank up in top lane but it did feel like you know they had three lanes that all required jungle attention and then contracts was just also trying to invade at the same time um so yeah, yeah. i think um there's still a team that's developing learning um middle of the pack team Definitely, for sure. Probably not uh, breaking top five, but probably not going to be the worst team either. Um, Honestly, it's been hard, especially with how this last weekend went, with every team kind of showing glimpses of doing well. Um, I'm not actually sure who the worst team is, but like last weekend or the weekend before, it was easily Immortals, right? But uh, Mm -hmm. this weekend, I'm not so sure anymore Um, because you have, you know, TSM doing well, Immortals doing well. All the different teams doing well, Dignitas doing well. So weird weekend, but fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, speaking of the bottom four, any do you guys got any thoughts on them? So Golden Guardians uh, is in sixth, then TSM at seventh, Immortals at, I'm sorry, uh, Golden Guardians at six, seven, eight. Mm. Dignitas, Dignitas is, is the yeah, team, yes. Di- yeah, Dignitas <laughs> is last. Yeah, I know. It's like, geez. Yeah, so any thoughts on the bottom there? Yeah. Um. <laughs> The scraps. I feel bad. That's that's not what I mean. But any any thoughts on the that area of the bracket of the the rosters? I don't no. think there's too yeah. much on. Not my too end, much to say. I think Golden Guardians again. They've only had a few wins, and their wins are like against bottom teams as well. And then C9 Week One. So it's like, yeah. I I think Price Dogger deserves a better team. I think that there is talent on that team, but it's just like. There's talent on the team, but there's not enough, right? They're not even mm-hmm. like they're misfiring or not hitting their peaks. Uh, if they all peaked, they maybe would be able to get like fourth or something. But their average is just not that high. So this is kind of where I expect them to be uh, based off of how they panned out. I did hope that Stick Say Ole was like, I like cheering for Ole. And I think that Price Talker is good as well. So I thought this would be enough. But yeah, Blaze's development isn't isn't stable enough for this team to go anywhere. Like, if they had a star mid laner, this might be enough of a core. Like, the other pieces are enough that they could actually get somewhere. But Mm -hmm. um, he's unfortunately gone down the route of a lot of promising NA talent, where, like, they look good in their first split or two, but there's just no development. Like, there's not... Not no, but there's not enough development. Yeah. And they don't look like they're improving week over week fast enough. That's just... Unfortunately, the case with a lot of like middle to lower the pack NA players, they aren't terrible, but they just don't get yeah. better. So like, slowly they just get outscaled. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move on then to the meta. Um, you know, I one thing I I noticed right away was uh, I think it was Team Liquid. They picked Lucian, Nami, and I forget who they were playing against, but the other team picked Coglulu, which we talked about was maybe a possible counter to Lucian Nami because. Uh, 
Mitchell, I believe you brought it up. Kogma would just destroy uh, that lane with Cog Cog Lulu, but didn't end up happening yeah. uh, when they played against Team Liquid. But uh, what are your thoughts on the meta or that matchup uh, in general? Uh, let me start with you, Mitchell, since that you were the one that kind of mentioned that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I still think Kogma Lulu is a great lane down in bot lane. Um, very lane dominant. Also scales really well. Um, just a lot of options. I feel like uh, when it comes to laning phase um, and in the draft as well. Um, but I mean, Alistair mentioned it last podcast that it's just, you never really want to early pick it. And most teams are early picking their bot lanes. Um, so Lushinami is an early rotation. Ezreal lanes are early rotation when you pick them. Um, you see it early Jinxes and Aphelios too. So everyone's just early picking their bot lane. So I guess no one wants to blind pick a Cog Lulu or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, otherwise, I, I don't know. The meta is very, it feels very stale right now because yeah, you get the yeah. same ADC bans and mm-hmm. then you either get like a Wukong ban or a very early Wukong Pryo and then the rest of the draft is just like a Zero Corky or like Sejuani top or Zeri or Senna, some combination down there. It feels like every draft is almost the same these yeah. days. Um, um, but... Yeah, I mean, I it's don't know. boring. Yeah, no, you're right. You're like trying to think of like it's really boring. I was just gonna say like I, you know, I was looking once again at the the presence uh, of all the champions. They're exactly the same champions we've been seeing. Um, and I don't know. Yeah. You're right. It it, it is kind of seen a, a little repetitive. So, Kevin, what what about you? Any thoughts on the meta? Uh, one interesting pick that showed up this week that I hadn't seen in our region, but I saw in LCK especially, it was Poppy. I thought that that was oh, really yeah. cool that mm-hmm. finally people were picking Poppy. Like, she got her W cooldown loaded a while ago, I feel like. I think it was pre-MSI, actually. And, like, just no one picked her in NA. And they're like, Gen G loves abusing Poppy. And mm. Inspire had a really funny Knight's Vow. He had a yeah. terrible chem tank and an anathema. So I was just like, that just degenerate. Like... <laughs> Like all that just like annoying effects on that character. Um, and it's just so good at shutting down a lot of the characters because you know, because of the way the game has been, there's so much dashing. I think the meta is somewhat stale. Like, I still do like that team fights are qu- like you get used yeah. to it because it's kind of like you get you can get used to anything, right? Humans are just like that, but I do like the fights are a little longer and I, I like that skill expression is still being seen more. But the problem is the champion. I don't even think it's the meta's fault in the sense of like what can be played. I just think it's pro players are like this, especially like NA pro yeah. players. Like you don't have a best of three to play, so you just pick what you think is best, and like you will pick Corky even though you know it's getting nerfed next week because you know that's your highest chance to win this week. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, guys, come on, like yeah, let's 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 mix it up a bit. I mean, it's not like other regions don't pick it. Uh, I'm really looking. It's not this patch, I think, but I am really looking forward to the changes to enchanters that I think are incoming and then the tp nerf in top lane just getting crapped on again tp getting top crapped on again yeah. is hilarious to me i think that will be a big meta shift mm. you yeah, might just see a little, like a bit later on yeah yeah is it it's next patch right the tp change? uh the tp changes haven't happened yet so patch hasn't come out with it yet oh, okay so it's still being yeah. talked about oh, yeah but yeah. Uh, there was a most recent patch that uh I don't know. It nerfed the hell out of Volley Bear. I thought that was the most random one. Uh, so not this weekend, but for or for this upcoming weekend, um, we're gonna be playing on the new or patch. Yeah. I think it's twelve fourteen or something. Um, and yeah, Volley Bear just got completely annihilated in that patch. So I don't think we'll be seeing him anymore because we did see him a little bit this weekend. Yeah, um, he makes his way in there. Didn't didn't do too hot, but yeah, yeah. That, that champion is dead. <laughs> yeah, it just uh, yeah. I, I, it is kind of funny because we usually have a lot of things to talk about with the meta, but this is the kind of I think the first week in a while where we're just kind of like, well, it's kind of just more of the same, uh, except for the poppy thing, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, but hey, look, players are playing what they're going to play. Like I honestly still am confused and head scratching the Callista pick. Like again, I've I haven't seen it do well. People are still picking it. I'm also not a big fan of the Lucian Nami if you're not really snowballing ahead. I will say I did note that I think it was Cloud9. They picked Callista um, against TSM and they played that pretty well. Like they got all the early dragons. They they even rotated for Rift. Um, and that's what I want to see. Like if they're going to play like these early game dominant champs bot lane, like I want to see that. And I feel like that's why... I don't know. To me, it just doesn't seem like Liquid gets a lot of huge leads in the bot lane with Lucian Nami, which should be, 
you know, kind of the thing, even, even something that they had mentioned is like, uh, I guess typically, um, you know, I don't play this combo a lot, especially coordinated, but you know, Lucian, Nami, you both go E, you have the, uh, electrocute and then Nami just ease Lucian, Lucian dashes in, you get easy trade proc electrocute. And that's like I, really the aggressive mode to go, but, um, yeah. they didn't do it. They didn't do it that game. So I don't know. Um, you know, yeah, go ahead, Mitchell. What were you going to say about it? Well, it's, so it's like, everybody knows that that's what the combo is. So like, uh, everybody's spacing for that combo, so it's like, the, I don't know, the Lucian Nami lane is probably being played a crap ton of scrims, it's probably seen everywhere in Champions queue. it's being played a ton in every single game, so everybody knows these interactions in lane, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure we're just not catching it, but it's like, players are just playing around it, and they're not letting you jump on you, like, they're just spacing properly so that you can't, um do the stupid Lucian Nami things, I mean, it's the same thing with, like, Callista Renata lanes, right, any lane mm -hmm. that's like, played a ton and is a super like high prio super aggressive lane everybody gets a ton of practice playing into it and they know how to mm -hmm. well kind of dodge around it and not get caught up in like the level two cheeses and like the random jump ons the random super high power bursts and stuff so i mean i i just think that's just how it goes with these lanes like they, it's been meta for months now or like a couple yeah. weeks or whatever people just figured it out i mean the lucian ami lane it's actually not that hard to play around you just you give up a couple early CS, maybe even some XP, and you're kind of sad about it for a little bit, but then you're fine. Well, that's why I'm. While. That's why I don't know why they keep picking. It. Especially, I'm. I'm looking at you, Team Liquid, but other teams as well. Like they, they like they insist that this is the early game comp, and maybe it is out of all the other options. I don't know, but it just doesn't seem like um, it's working. So, or for what it's intended to do, you know, yeah. uh, which I, is I dominate early game. Yeah, I don't because I don't think it's like. I think it's still strong, like just combo in general. Like even mm -hmm. if you don't dominate yeah. early game, like it'll still scale, all right. Uh, and you can still like have a lot of agency and like slowing people and um, doing a lot of damage later on. But um, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of like strong lane combos that you can put pick into it. Where maybe yeah, it definitely feels like Lucianami is kind of over prioritized and like yeah. thought of as. I don't know, like your ultimate like gateway into getting into the mid game, but um, yeah, it's just not as strong. Also, I mean, I think like with Lucian, like that champion is such a high skill cap champion, like to be really good. And um, I don't know if there's a lot of great Lucians um, in in an a, in an a right right now because Hansam is not it right now. Like he's not, yeah. and there are other like I just haven't seen Lucian players in general like kind of wow me. Uh, I haven't watched LCK or LPL, so, but I I'm venturing to guess that those lucian players are probably a little uh a little bit better a little yeah. more uh mechanical mm -hmm. and can dominate still like you know because they just have the hands for it and that's what i mean like Sama <laughs> there's no hands here lucian he was such an insane lucian at worlds uh when lucian nami was playing played at worlds a ton yeah. he was like crazy on him uh on those road games but um I don't yeah know, and i'm gonna chalk game, it up yeah. to like maybe he just over thought that like bjergsen on you know zillion would, would help him but you know honestly i was talking with alistair forehand and he said it wasn't just lucian he he felt that han sama on any of the champions played you know zeri as ezreal or whatever he just feels like he's not playing well in team fights um and i kind of have to agree with him he, he didn't elaborate too much but and i'm sure we'll talk about it when he comes back but yeah he's not, yeah, he's, not a, he's not a big yeah. fan of han sama no matter what the champion is right now so i will say that <laughs> at least in the last game it did feel like um because he like flashed over that wall into eg right and mm -hmm. then it felt yeah. like he got his, his a large combo off he just did no damage he did like yeah. build collector and almost everybody had armor on the enemy team too um like danny had a frozen heart and everybody had like tab eyes yeah. and like zonias and armor and stuff so that's another thing right he went the classic like gale force collector build and sometimes if you just don't do damage when you build mm -hmm. that on lucian sometimes you just do a truck ton of damage because you're ahead or you do nothing at all yeah build, like, i also combined. say like historically <laughs> hansom is just not a lucian player other than worlds last year i went through his whole career and i could like spot like on one hand the amount of games he's played lucian per year uh, last year he played it a bunch at Worlds because it was just so important in the meta. And if you couldn't counter pick Lucian and just take it away from some of these Worlds teams, like you would just get, you would get blasted. Um, but that's not the case right now. It's not like a solo lane like massive, um, yeah, prior pick, right? So, I I think it's fine for them to try it. But he is just historically not at this player. And like we've seen this case with a lot of AD carries. When you're not playing your archetype of AD carries, like I think I when I think of Han Sama, I think of Kaisa, I think of 
sometimes Ophelios, and then I also think of obviously Draven. But I don't know if he'll pull out Draven, even though it's been buffed this season. I I would like to see a bit more of him playing characters he's known for playing and like has been good on. Yeah. Uh, I will agree, like he just hasn't played well. Uh, this this half of this or this split, except for week one, and he hasn't played any Jinx, which he was really good on last. Mm-hmm. But I thought his Jinx was half more than half of his games were on Jinx or Aphelios. So like yeah. he, whenever he was playing that, I'm like, yeah, he's just as good at Danny at it, and probably better in lane than Danny at it. And he hasn't played a single game of it, which is very strange to me. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there any final thoughts you guys wanted to mention? Uh, any last? Uh, tidbits there before we wrap things up. Yeah, um, there was a little bit of drama with Doublelift getting banned from doing yeah, co streaming for right. the last super week. I think it's like week eight is super week um, because he said that LCS is dying uh, on stream. And first of mm. all, like it's kind of yeah. weird that they're banning one of the most popular. That's so dumb. Um, LCS, like just basically one of the figureheads of LCS. Like even though he's not in it anymore, he's one of the most important figures and mm-hmm. drums up a lot of attention. So. It is not a great look when you're like banning the guy who like <laughs> is behind your uh is like trying to even though he's not he's not saying things like that, he is like preventing LCS from dying in a way, right? And it's not helping. Uh I will say like I think Double F isn't very good at looking at the long picture in the sense that like it's kind of a self fulfilling prophecy when all the like influencers and stuff like that are saying, Oh, this and this are dying, this and that are dying, like that's not doing any favors and you do rely on the na not just lcs per se but just the na league being important in na yep to like be relevant like i don't know about double if in other games to be honest um mm-hmm. i think he he is he likes league even though he will shit on it just like most people who like league <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and i think to to briefly expand upon it like this is just an issue with na and, and league in general like na loves to find the next dead game and likes yeah. to shit on it. And I think that's just the culture we have here. We like to make fun of things and want things to fail for some reason. And I think that, like, we've been doing this podcast for three, four years now. And we've always, like, no matter what we've said about LCS, we've never said, like, we give up on it. Yeah, we, no. At least I not, still like, watch it. Outside yeah. Of jo- outside of joking, right? Okay. Yeah. We've never said we give yeah. up on it. And I think that, like, maybe this change doesn't start here, but I would like to at least, like, make it clear. Like, I think LCS is interesting to watch it can be even more fun to watch obviously but like it's not that bad it's actually just objectively been better this year than last year where the viewership was better last year and the snowball of just like community sentiment where they're like you know it's just dying it's boring it's worthless or whatever like and then influencers pretty much just like buying onto the negative hype train i guess and liking to be negative because i don't know it's fun to do that um i don't know i think that's the easy way out i think you should want your like home country to do well like well yeah. brazil's league hasn't been dying forever they're getting more views even though they for the longest time have just been getting worse and worse and there's just so many other examples right lfl all those erls they're not good like i'm sorry they're not like lec level <laughs> they're not lcs level hopefully uh but they're getting more and more viewership we can do that too and it's, it, it comes from like a change in how you view things and also a change from the top. Like obviously yeah. LCS is not doing us favors, but you know, we get, we should hold up our end of the bargain and try to be a little bit more positive when things are worth being positive and be critical when they're not. But I think dying isn't the right way to discuss things. Um, because a lot of the numbers dropped this year was like, cause C9 fucked up yeah, and TSM fucked up. Not because like the broadcast did anything wrong. I mean, and to to be fair, like you, with the crowd back in, I definitely hear like I feel like at first with even with the crowd there it was a little weird, like they didn't know how to cheer or something. And now you like hear it la you know, this past time and it seemed like there was a lot more chatter in the audience, a lot more cheering. It just looked a little more hype. I honestly too, what I really liked, and this is something I don't understand because so Hooney, right? He's on the analyst desk, but he also got the TriCast um you know one of the games and i thought that was just the best thing ever like he's just funny like you might not like him as a player but he's a funny guy just to you know have he kind of speaks his mind you know whether it's kind of way out there or not i mean imagine if they had double lift try casting sneaky media you know it'd be instead of trying to like kind of you know not have them co-stream or not take away from 
viewership. Why don't you have these guys on in the, you know, it's in the studio. They're local. Like they can literally yeah. go there and be in there just like Hooney was, because I honestly found that very like entertaining, just having them there. Someone who's close to the scene. And even though he might not be playing, you know, he knows a lot. Double if hasn't played in a while, but we know he knows a lot. They give us an inside look as a player. And this, this happens with other sports all the time, right? Like, you know, yeah. football players have like X. Do this. Yeah, we used to do yeah. this. Like, but yeah, what like is happening? We used to do this stuff before. It was like uh, give that old, old schooly janky sort of vibe. Yes. that uh, were nice. Yeah, I mean, like back when I played. The, you know, we used yeah. to do it on the side stream when we did best of threes that year. I remember we used to have like medios would come in and we would have like sneaky and yeah, have acuity, yeah I think like side and they stream, had the side stream. Yeah. I just yeah. want it on the mainstream, man. It can't be worse than what we have right now in terms of like gathering people, right? Like, like I don't we, understand the the tricast well, is perfect lose, unless unless the people don't want to do it right unless double behind the scenes say no he doesn't want to waste his time walking over to the studio it's like probably a, a close drive to his home I assume so yeah no I I mean yeah I I don't like you, they can just find someone else you know they can just find a new personality it, it just seems like there's a lot of opportunities that Rai could take to. Uh, yeah expand and connect the community more but um you know the the denying bjergsen thing on an off weekend yeah. because of some older archaic rule like all these mm -hmm. stuff like it is gonna add up and it's gonna annoy the the community and and frustrate people because that was mm -hmm. silly right it's like super no, silly mr beast guys you should just whatever it doesn't matter what rule you have just scrap it this is about making money right right like, i know what i just that you was literally really don't dumb. want like one of the biggest content the creators big, out there yeah to who who average, actually uh, likes league player. And he actually yeah. likes League. Like, what? You like, know? 100% just be like, all right, whatever rule you have, just get rid of it. It's not worth it. It's just... <laughs> I guess they don't uh, want to make money. I don't know. I, it's just well, I mean, really I, mean, I will say, in most circumstances, when you're a League, right? And, and this is the same in real sports. Your League franchise players do need to be kind of exclusive or the League loses value. Like, if you just hand them out to anything, that's a problem. However, in this case, this makes no sense because yeah. this is just giving you more exposure and raising the value of your player as well as your league. So it's all of a win-win for Riot. Like, there's no reason they should And it wasn't, it was on like, it was during a break. It wasn't like during like a scheduled, uh, like game or something where he'd actually yeah yeah he wasn't yeah. like you know cutting a split to go to exactly Korea or whatever like clg did <laughs> that's what i mean <laughs> cutting a couple weeks not a and split. it's not like like in basketball where you know they have clauses where you you can't play but so much like pick up basketball because they don't want you to get hurt right you're not going to get hurt in lee like you could play one <laughs> game the chances of you get injured are very minimal hey. like it yeah. could happen like but it's very minimal playing. In the professional league, and he still had that performance, he would get hurt mentally. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He did get. Uh -huh. He did die. He <laughs> did. Non-professional yeah. players. Like but I don't I mean, know, man. I mean, that just going hurt. back to like the little things that they could do. This is, I think, what the frustrating thing is, you know. And I will say, yeah, people, our fans definitely go overboard and say, "Oh, it's dead." And there's really not a lot mm -hmm. of merit to it. But at the same time, I think. Like, they need to listen up. Like, LCS needs to listen up because um, I think a lot of that stems from, like, these sim seemingly simple solutions, which, again, we don't know everything. We don't know behind the scenes, but it doesn't seem like it'd be that hard. Uh, but having yeah. who who need barely I mean he English is not his first language and he tri casted just fine. Like sometimes he'd say yeah. things that were a little out there or didn't make sense, but the other casters <laughs> know what they're doing and they know how to reel it back in. I think the whole point is is that you get a different perspective. You get it from somebody who's played the game before. You understand he's not gonna be the greatest caster because that's not what he does. But again, like to have uh that perspective, one, I think it keeps those old faces in the scene which for a lot of us is nostalgia like they're still part of it you know imagine still having some of your old favorite players still being around uh, and sharing their insight that's important yeah. um but yeah like i think that's where the frustration comes out and sometimes that's why it's like it's such a dying game because it just doesn't seem like they're doing the right things i know they're doing things to try to increase the entertainment value and that sort of thing but i feel like there are other things that shouldn't be hard to implement that they're just not doing or flat out like not trying to pursue i don't know Dude, so. any people have been saying that league has been dying since overwatch came out in 2016 and we're yeah that's fine. true like come on this is this is just like people want it to die for some reason like they gain joy from seeing like something suffer i don't know it's so weird to me also we've been watching riv bless his heart talk like half nonsense for like years <laughs> upon years and it was still entertaining <laughs> it so, was like, still fun mm. come on I, I, it might it maybe it's something to do with like jobs and contracts with the the 
like the full time casters and they don't want to be like upshone or whatever. They're, like, they're not going to be like, upshone. Who are they going to put? Oh my gosh. I think they That's might just... be, honestly. If it, like some of the casters, if you had Double and Medios and like Sneaky just coming in every other week, like people would be like, why is this caster casting when they couldn't get a pro player and then why are the pros coming? That's probably what they're worried about is how I feel just being in a corporation. Yeah, but I mean, so like, look, it's not like Hooney did it every game. He did it for like one yeah. year. You know, it's a spotlight yeah, game. It's funny. The, it's more about like, why aren't they doing it every game, right? Yeah. Like, they'll get mad about it. And I think that's, that's weird. And I think you should just integrate it. Like, just have TriCast. Like, why yeah, don't we have, have more? If we can have pro players come in, you can pay them. But like, yeah, I think they would probably enjoy it. They could even do it remotely if we really have to, although that'd be kind of cursed. But yeah. I just want like, we have so many pros who are so important to the scene and so many of them just have never been used on broadcast more than like a random like desk segment or something. Yeah. Like we have high crumbs for a while and like, that's it. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that literally it? That's so strange. Yeah. 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 I feel like it definitely could be underused where uh, we have a lot of resources available that we don't use, but uh, I don't know. At least I feel like we still do it better than other games, but we could just be doing it so much more. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's what it is. We do do it better than other games. We do. But yeah. other games haven't been able to survive as long as that's every game true. other than Counter-Strike. Yeah, I'm t- I mean, for all, all the memes and stuff, like all these people that say League is dying, it doesn't matter because they'll never stop playing because we're all addicted to it and yes. we're never leaving the game. <laughs> so just quiet your mouth and watch your watch your league, watch your games, play the games, lose solo queue, and just play some more. I mean, that's simply how it's going to go. But uh, any final thoughts or anything? Uh, I think that was pretty good. Uh, wrap things up. All right. Uh, hopefully, Alistair will be with us next week. Uh, but once again, thank you to my co-hosts, Kevin and Mitchell, for sharing your wise thoughts. Uh, and as always, thank you for listening to you out there. Uh, but until next time, enjoy your climb on the rift. Try not to be too toxic. And we'll see you all on the next episode. Peace.